Hi everyone, welcome to this class on factorization. So this is a very important class where we are going to have some fun with factorization and I'm going to make this topic really easy. Factorization is a very important topic in maths and it's used for all classes 7 to 10 and even class 11, 12. And I'm going to show you the techniques of how to factorize. So I'm sure after watching this class, you'll be able to factorize any sum. I'm going to be showing you all the different techniques and why do we do factorization. So guys, stay tuned. And I'd also like to say that we have this website, manochaacademy.com. So guys, do check it out. We've got these amazing courses on physics, chemistry, and maths for CBSE class nine and 10. And we also have physics for ICSE class nine. So guys, do join these courses. They're at great discounts right now. You'll get to watch interactive videos. Uh, we have uh, live classes also on our website uh, where I take live classes. There are quizzes and questions and you get direct replies from me. So I'll put the links below and thanks a lot uh, for your love and support. So guys do check it out. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button right now and do click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos or live classes that we upload. So welcome everyone. Great to see a lot of you here. So hi Vivan, hi Narendra Sharma, hi uh, Kirit, hi Sudha Singh. Welcome everyone to this really important class on factorization. And I hope you have your pen and paper ready so that you can do some fun maths here. Okay, so let's dive right into it, guys. So what is factorization? So you know, you've done these simple things, right? Where if I tell you to find the factors of six, you know, it's going to be two into three, right? These are the factors of six. We are factorizing. What are the factors of 30, guys? What are the factors of 30? So we can write 30 as two times three times five, right? So I'm sure you guys are familiar with this prime factorization. Very good. So I want all of you to try, right? And guys, how will you factorize 12? So come on, tell me, how do you factorize 12? Okay, so 12 is going to be, we can say two times six, right? So 12 is two into six, but we can further break that down into, so very good. I see a lot of you are writing, uh, the final prime factors are going to be, because six is two into three, so it's going to be two into two into three, right? So this is the simple factorization that we do with numbers, right, in arithmetic. But we are going to be looking at factorization for polynomials, right, in algebra. So uh, let's compare, uh, like if there we were factorizing, now if I say you need to find the product. So let's really understand what is factorization. So what is two times two times three? It's 12, right? So can you see this is, here we are finding the product and factorization is the opposite. Because when you factorize, you write 12 as two into two into three, right guys? And now if I say, uh, what is the uh, product of six plus two uh, uh, 6 plus 2 times 6 plus 3, this one, right? So that was a simple number example. And now if we do it in uh, algebra, how do you find this product? So again, you know, you just have to simply multiply, right? So what is it going to be, guys? So if you find the product, it's going to be x squared, right? So you'll get a 2x plus 3x plus 6. And if you simplify that further, we are going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay? So this what we are talking about is finding the product, right? So can you see we are multiplying and we are writing it uh, in its simplest form, right? X squared plus 5X plus 6. Factorization is exactly the opposite, right? So for factorization, what do we do? We turn the sum into a product, okay? So can you see, right? So for factorization, what do we do? Uh, if we want to factorize X squared plus 5X plus 6, you can see we uh, we just did that. So this answer is going to turn out to be something like this, right? So we are going to get, as you can see from here, if we know how to factorize, which is what we're going to learn, it's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 3. So guys, can you see in factorize, what are we doing? We are turning those sum of the terms. So what are the sum of the terms of the polynomial? x squared plus 5x plus 6. We are turning it into a product. So this is the meaning of factorization, right? So we are breaking it down into simpler terms and into a product, right? So factorize, we can spell with a Z or with an S, you know, so it's fine. So you'll see both the spellings. So I'll just write it with an S right now. So factorize, right? And so basically we are turning it into a product here. So we are going from a sum, sum of terms 
to a product of terms. Can you see that? That is the meaning of factorization. You're simplifying the thing into so uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is simplified into simpler terms and a product. Okay. Now, how do you factorize 2x squared plus 11x plus 5? That's exactly what we're going to be learning in the class, right? What technique to use? Because this one was simple. Since we just did the product, we could do it. But how do we do the next question, right? And that's exactly what we are going to be learning today. All right, guys. Now, another question is, you may be asking, why do I need to learn factorization? Is it important? What's its use? Factorization is a very, very important technique in maths, in algebra, uh, because you'll see it can be used for simplification, right? So, for example, if I tell you uh, to simplify x squared minus 7x plus 10 divided by this, how, do, how are you going to simplify it? Very good. Some of you are already writing the answers. Excellent, guys. So how do you simplify this thing? So that's what we're going to be learning in this class. We want to turn the sum into a product because then we can easily cancel out stuff, right? So for example, this is going to be uh, turning into x minus 2 times x minus 5. So I'm just writing it right now and I'll show you how to do that, right? Uh, we are trying to see why are we factorizing. And if you look at the uh, term here, it's going to be basically x minus 1 times x minus 2, right? So if we factorize uh, this thing, uh, x square minus 7x plus 10, we're going to break it down into x minus 2 and x minus 5. And x square minus 3x plus 2 breaks down like this. Now, what's the advantage? You can easily cancel these terms. Can you see? x minus 2 gets canceled. So this guy gets simplified to x minus 5 by x minus 1. And there's no way you can do that without factorization, okay? And that's why, what we're going to learn today. So first we are seeing why we factorize. And factorization is very uh, useful in solving equations. Can you see this uh, polynomial, uh, this quadratic equation that we have here? So where we set the polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. So guys, do you know uh, what is the solution of this equation? You need factorization to do it. So who can tell me? So come on, guys. What will be the answer of this equation? So if, uh, basically, we've been given this uh, equation and we want to find the value of x. Excellent, excellent. I see that Oswin has the right answer here. Uh, Priyal is saying middle term breaking. Very good, guys. So that's what we're going to be learning the te uh, techniques for that. So please check it. So uh, we're going to uh, break this down into its factors, right? And we'll see how to do that. So as we discussed in the previous slide, look here x squared plus 5x plus 6, if you do the product, it breaks down like that, right? So it's going to break down into this. And now when we set it to 0, we've broken our complex thing, x squared plus 5x plus 6 into simpler parts. Can you see? These are two simple parts. So we can now easily write x plus 2 is 0 because it's a product. So either x plus 2 is 0, right? Because it's the equation is set to 0 or x plus 3 is 0. So it helps us to solve the quadratic equation. Very good, guys. Very good. And so that's why the answer is going to be either x is going to be minus 2 or x is equal to minus 3. So see, factorization helped us solve the value of x, which is turning out to be minus 2 or x equal to minus 3. Excellent. I see uh, Suryash, Jaiswal, you've got the right answer. Very good. Uh, Kirith has the right answer. Albert Einstein, absolutely right. Clear? So this is why we do factorization. It helps us in simplification. It helps us to solve complicated equations because we break it into a simple product, right? Of different terms. Very good. So in today's class, we are going to talk about the different factorization techniques. And guys, don't be scared by this list of nine things, right? I'm going to show you nine techniques, but I'm going to make it really easy, okay? And show you with examples. Right. And some of you are asking, what's my name? So, guys, my name is Sandeep Panocha. And if you haven't hit the like button, please hit it right now and do subscribe to our channel, Manocha Academy, and do share it out with your friends so that we have more people on our Manocha Academy family. All right, guys. And we are going to be going over these important techniques, nine techniques, and we'll do it one by one. So after the end of this class, you'll be a master of master of factorization and you can use uh, you learn how to apply which technique for which sum, right? So you need to go over this list in your mind and try to identify which one to apply. So let's go ahead and start with our first technique, which is the simple one, taking out the common factor. OK, guys, we're going to be looking at this. So taking out the common factors, for example, the question is given 
5x square minus 20xy. So come on guys, can you try that? What do you think is going to be the first answer? So I want all of you to try here. Yeah, yes, we're going to go through all the techniques with simple examples. I hope we can do all. So let's go ahead and try guys. Come on. So what is the common factor here? So if you look at what we've been given, 5x squared minus 20xy. So you can see 5 is common to the two terms. So you're taking out the common factor, which is common in all the terms. And what are our terms? 5x squared and minus 20xy. Very good. A lot of you are already writing the answers. Excellent, guys. So we can take 5 common. And can you see x is also in common? Excellent. So 5x. And this is going to be basically, we'll be left with x minus, uh, this is going to be 4y. Right, guys? So this is our factorization, right? We factored it into these two parts, 5x times x minus 4y. Superb. Very good. Okay. Let's, uh, guys, go ahead and try the next one. You need to factorize the second question by taking out the common factor. Come on. This one is also not very difficult. Guys, try it. So, and it's always important to take out common factors. Okay. Whatever question you're given, the golden rule is if there's some common factor, take it out. Okay. So that you simplify your question. And what do we do for the next one, guys? What is the common factor? Very good, very good. So I see uh, Nikola Tesla, you got the right answer for the previous one. Very good. And guys, now let's try the next question. Excellent. Excellent. I see Dheeraj Mani, you have the right answer. Very good. So we are going to take out the common factor is going to be B plus C. Can you see? B plus C is common, right? And what are we left with here? We are left with 5A, right? So if we take out the B plus C, can you see that's common to both the terms? And so we are going to get B plus C times we are left with 5A minus 3B. So see, we factorize that a complicated expression into this simple product of these two terms. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So this is our first simple technique, which we learned was taking out the common factor. And always remember to do that. Whatever question you're given, if there's something common, take it out. That simplifies your question, right? Now let's look at the next one, which is grouping. So we're going to take a look at our next uh, uh, technique, grouping. So for example, if you're given this question, so come on guys, use your pen and paper and try to solve this x square minus 5x plus x minus 5. So now if you carefully notice, how many terms do we have in this uh, polynomial? So how many terms are here? Of which class this topic is for? Some of you are asking, it's important for all classes from class 7 to 10, even in 11, 12, you use this stuff, right? Factorization is a very important and very powerful technique in algebra, okay? So you can see that there's no common term here, right? Uh, no common factor. Uh, so there are four terms, very good. And there's uh, no factor we can take out in common. So what are we going to do, guys? We need to group some stuff here. So let's write this down. We have x square minus 5x plus x minus 5. Okay. So if we group the first two terms, I can take out x in common. And so we are going to get guys x minus 5. Right. And now since we want an x minus 5, we can take one common here. And we are go going to get because one you can always take common and we have a x minus 5. Excellent. I see uh, Mitra has the right answer. Mitra Dana. Very good. Uh, Jay Reddy, you have the right answer. Superb. And so now you can see, now once we group this, can you see the common factor, guys? X minus 5. Excellent. Excellent. So X minus 5 is going to be in common. And then we are going to get times X plus 1. So see, this is how we factorize that question into the product of X minus 5 times X plus 1. And this technique is called grouping. Crystal clear? Excellent, guys. So let's move on to our... So we've done the first two techniques taking out the common factor and grouping. Let's look at our third technique today, difference of two squares. So the main thing is when you look at a factorization question, you need to go over this list in your mind and see which one it fits into. And some questions use multiple techniques. Okay, so they're really interesting. All right, uh, so let's learn the techniques today. So what is difference of two squares? So I'm sure you've seen this uh, identity, right? So of uh, difference of two squares where a square minus b square, very famous, uh, identity a square minus b square is a plus b times a minus b right you've seen this 
okay so now let's apply this to this question here so i want all of you to try i've written the a square minus b square identity on top for you so try to factorize a square minus 4 b square so come on guys yes and my name is sandeep manocha guys and uh, so do subscribe to our channel manocha academy and we also have a website manochaacademy.com and the best part is you can open it on a phone a laptop desktop it's like a web app so it's very useful and we have courses and questions there so do check it out okay so how do you factorize this very good i see a lot of good answers so what is the technique here so main is that you need to uh, when you see these squares let's see what we can uh, how we can express this so this we can write as a square right and what is this basically you can see that this is nothing but 2b squared so always remember to express it as uh, a square minus b square form or if you consider x square minus y square right so can you see the difference of two squares okay and now when you're writing the answer uh, say it in your mind a plus b what is it going to work out to be the factors a plus b times a minus b so let's say it and do it together so it's going to be a plus b and what is the b here in this question can you see the b is basically 2b right so it's going to be a plus 2b right times a minus 2b so very important to express it in that uh, square form excellent i see raja mukherjee has the right answer nipun uh, uh, naikwadi very good okay uh, vasudev you have the right answer excellent guys so is this clear and very important to express it like this can you see the difference of two squares so that you don't make a careless mistake and then say it in your mind while you're writing a plus b times a minus b superb guys superb okay so let's go ahead and try this another question on difference of two squares again you have to use a square minus b square can you see the formula right up here on your screen a square minus b square is a plus b times a minus b very famous identity right very useful so come on guys try the next question which is 9x square minus 25y square so we want to factorize this guy right so change the uh, terms, uh, the sum or pro uh, difference of terms into a product form, right? That is factorization. So remember, we want to express it as square, right? So 3x square, right? Minus, what is this going to be? 5y square. Always write this step, you know? Don't jump the gun. Don't go directly, okay? Always write this step. Excellent, guys. Excellent. It's great to see a lot of you responding with answers. Superb. So I see very good uh, that you guys are all trying here. I want everybody to try. And guys, please sit with a pen and paper, you know, because some of these, uh, it's difficult to do mentally. Here, I'm writing it on the tablet here, right? So can you see what is this going to work out to be? 3x plus 5y, right? So again, say a plus b. So our a is here. Can you see, guys? This is our a, basically, right? So 3x, this is our a term and this is our b term, right? So it's going to be, uh, the answer works out to be a plus b times a minus b. So let's say that, right? Uh, so 3x plus 5y, a plus b and a minus b, right? So did I get it right? Is it correct? Excellent, guys. Okay, so that's how we do this. Super, very good. So 3x plus 5y, 3x minus 5y. Fantastic, guys. So we've uh, taken a look at three techniques. So guys, don't be scared by this list. We've done three important already. Taking out the common factor, grouping, difference of two squares, okay? So let's move on to the next one, which is using binomial identities, right? So let's take a look at that. So you've seen these famous identities, A plus B whole square, okay? Why do I call them binomial identities here? Because they have two terms, right? A plus B, right? Can you see the two terms? So a plus b whole square is a square plus b square, pl uh, sorry, a square plus 2ab plus b square, right? And a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab plus b square, okay? So these are very, very important identities. So guys, take a look at these two and we are going to use them to factorize this. So can you see the question on the board here? Uh, 4x square plus 12xy plus 9y square. Come on. Excellent. Uh, right so Hari Nathan is saying because it has two terms yeah that's why we call very good that is why we call it binomial identities right and so let's use it to factorize this so what is the technique here so basically you're looking at 
if there are three terms, right? So can you see in the binomial identities, if you have three terms, this and two of them are squares, right? And the other is twice the product, okay? So can you see this pattern here? The, uh, and the only difference is in the sign, right? So let's take a look at our question. So can you see there's a 4x squared, which is basically, can you see it's a square of uh, 2x whole square, right? Can you see that? And this one is 9y squared, which is basically 3y whole square. So how do you identify I should use a binomial identity? You need squares, right? Two, the sum of two squares. And then what do you have in the middle? It should be plus two times. So let's uh, take a look. So we need to have plus two times 2x, right? The product of the terms. So let's see if it matches. So two times 2x here. Can you see 2x and 3y? So if you do two times 2x times 3y, what do we get? Uh, two uh, times two times three is 12, 12xy. And that is exactly what we have in our question. So that means you can apply, apply the binomial identities. Don't blindly apply it the moment you see squares, okay? So what is the key thing here in the binomial identity? You need three terms, right? And they can be in any order, so you can rearrange them, right? It's an addition or subtraction. So three terms, two of them are squares, right? And the other term is two times the product, right? Of the other two terms. It's like a 2xy or a 2ab, I should write here, to match the symbols, 2ab form. Right, guys? So very good. I see some of you already writing the answer. So in this one, what is it going to be? Uh, so there's a 2x. So our terms are basically 2x squared, right? So uh, 2x plus 3y. Excellent, guys. Uh, can you see? And that's going to be whole square, right? So it's a perfect square, right? 2x plus 3y squared because it's of the form a plus b whole square, where you can see our terms a and b are basically 2x and 3y. Okay, I should have a plus in here also, right? So there needs to be a, a plus in here for the last term, right? So here it was 3y whole square, clear? So that is how you identify, very good. I see a lot of you've got the right answer. So we are getting it of the form a plus b whole square. Let's move on to the next question. So come on guys, try to factorize this question. Again, can you see binomial identities you need to apply? Because if you look at the question, there are uh, two square terms. Can you see this guy and this guy is probably your square term. And then you should check if this is two times the product of the other two terms. Okay, so I want all of you to try. Excellent, excellent. Great too. Here you're enjoying the session. Uh, you know, some of these... Uh, 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 some of these uh, uh, questions I'm going over a little fast because you know it's easy and yes we do uh, so you're asking uh, Ashwini is asking yes we have physics chemistry and maths classes I teach all the three subjects physics chemistry and maths so do check out our courses on our website manochacademy.com and also we have videos on our YouTube channel right uh, Manocha Academy so guys do check it out and if you haven't hit the like button please hit the like button right now and do share it out with your friends so thanks guys for hitting the like button. So please uh, try and uh, go ahead and try this question. Come on. I want all of you to try. Currently, we don't have biology classes. We are soon trying to add biology also. I know there are a lot of requests for that. Okay. Uh, currently, we have physics, chemistry and maths and they're really awesome courses. So do check it out. Okay. So can you see here guys? So what do we have? So this one we can write. Uh, this is basically we have 4x plus y whole square right uh, minus 20 uh, y and x plus y so uh, this one is uh, to make it a little simpler we are going to take let x plus y be a okay so if you guys do that then what uh, what can we write this question as it's basically going to become so to simplify it we are going to get 4a square right so let's simplify minus 20 y right this is going to be a plus 25 y square so now if you look at these terms, what are the terms? This is a 2a whole square, the first term. Can you guys see that, right? Minus two times, or let's do the squares first, okay? And this is gonna be 5y whole square. So you can see that's a nice square. And then we have, uh, we have to check whether it's a product of 2a times 5y. And you can see it is, right? Because two times 2a times 5y gives us 20yA. Excellent guys, excellent. A Lot of you are trying, it's great to see that. So what do we finally have? And it's a minus, so we are gonna apply this identity, a minus b, because it's of the form 
a square, right? Can you see the form? a square minus 2ab plus b square. So it's going to work out into a a minus b whole square. So that's basically going to be 2a minus what is our b? 5y. So do all of you agree? 2a minus 5y whole square, right? And now we basically need to substitute the value of a, which is which we took as x plus y. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. Simple. So 2, it's going to be 2x plus 2y minus 5y whole square, right, guys? And now don't forget to simplify, right? Because you see there's a 2y minus 5y. So don't leave the answer like this. It's going to be 2x minus 3y whole square is the final answer. So this is our final answer here. Can you see that? Excellent. I see Kirit has got the right answer here. Uh, very good. Uh, some of you have got the right answer, Vasudev, but please simplify that. Don't leave it as, if you leave it as 2x plus 2y minus 5, you may not get, you know, the whole answer right. So definitely simplify it. Okay. Excellent, guys. So 2x minus 3y whole square. Fantastic. Clear? So here we used our binomial identities. Here we use the minus 1 because it was a a square minus 2ab plus b square form. Superb. So what have we uh, learned till now, guys? We've taken out the common factor, grouping, right? Simple difference of two squares, a square minus b square, right? And we've used our a plus b whole square and a, min uh, a minus b whole square formula. Now let's look at the interesting trinomial identity. So from the name, you can understand there are going to be three terms because it's a trinomial. And what are the three terms? a, b, and c. It's a, a plus b plus c whole square. And you have this huge formula, right? a square plus b square plus c square. Okay, so can you see this part is similar to the a plus b whole square? a square plus b square plus 2ab plus because there's c. So there's going to be plus c square. So can all of you see, guys? This part is the same like we saw earlier. But now there's the plus c square plus 2ac plus 2bc. So you should learn it like this, right? Clear, guys? So now I want you to apply this trinomial identity, right? and factorize this question because you can see it's of the trinomial form, right? You have the three square terms and then three product terms there, right? So go ahead and try. All right, I want all of you to try this question. Come on, guys. Super, very good. I'm seeing a lot of you writing answers. It's great to see that. So how do we identify the things here? Okay, so you can see that there's a 2x whole square here, right? So this term is basically gonna be a 2x whole square right so can you guys see that this is a 2x whole square you have simple y square and z square and here what do we have right so if you see there's a product of 4xz and there's some minus signs here so how do we resolve that right so since uh, the xz product is positive right so either uh, you you're going to you're going to have uh, both x and z are going to be positive or they're going to be both negative okay so let's take x and z to be positive right so we have 2x right so this is going to be 2 times 2x times z okay and this term is basically going to be minus 2 times okay so what do we have there uh, so we have uh, sorry plus 2 times uh, we are going to get 2x and we need a minus y can you see that because we want minus 4xy so this is a bit tricky because you have to look at each term and try to get it into that 2ab 2ac 2bc form and what is this going to be this term this is basically we want a plus right so plus 2 times minus y and times z since we took the z as positive all of you see that okay excellent i see some of you already have the answer wow you guys are really fast excellent so please check my answer also right in case i'm making some careless error here so please check it uh, so we have uh, finally our whole expression can be written in this form so to make it clear guys let's write it out 2x whole square plus y square plus z square, right? The first three terms plus 2 times 2x minus y, right? And then we have uh, plus 2 times minus y, z, right? And plus another 2 times 2x plus uh, in times z. So can you see it is of that a square plus b square plus c square plus 2ab plus 2bc, uh, sorry, plus 2ac plus 2bc form, right? Huge formula, okay? And then uh, that simplifies into a a plus b plus c whole square. So what are our terms? So 2x, right? Okay, and here, uh, sorry guys, I made a mistake here. It should be y square, right? It should be minus y square, okay? Because we are taking the term as minus y, 
right? Can you see that? So it's a minus y whole square. Okay, sorry about that. Can you see? Uh, okay, so write those terms carefully. So 2x minus y we have, right? And then there is a plus z because we took x and z as positive, right? And this whole square because that's what our identity tells us a plus b plus c please look at the identity whole square okay so this is how we have factorized that and that's our final answer excellent a lot of you guys got it be careful of the sign 2x minus y plus z but let's say you had taken x and z to be negative then also you would have got the same answer so an alternate answer would be uh, if we are x and uh, z was negative then we would have got minus 2x right uh, plus y minus z right whole square and if you take the minus in common uh, right it's going to be minus 1 whole square uh, times 2x uh, minus y plus z so you can see it works out to the same answer because minus 1 whole square is going to be 1 okay so it doesn't matter so we take usually we'll uh, take the positive values so this is our answer here can you see that that's our final answer factorization excellent guys so we got it as a product of 2x minus y plus z whole square. So it's basically 2x minus y plus z times 2x minus y plus z. Clear? Using our trinomial identity, trinomial a plus b plus c whole square. Can you see that? Excellent, guys. So this thing. All right. Very good. So let's go ahead to the next technique. So we've done the first five techniques, I think, right? Yeah, right up to trinomial identity. So guys, are you ready to take a look at the splitting the middle term of a quadratic poly polynomial, also known as middle term breaking? Okay, right. So let's take a look at that. Great. We've already done five techniques. Let's move on to the next one, which is called splitting the middle term or simply middle term breaking. So what do we need to do here? So I think a lot of you are familiar with this. Otherwise, don't worry. I'm going to go over it. So you have x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we can't, you know, take out anything in common here. So those techniques don't work the initial ones. So we are going to break this middle term. Who's the middle term here? Minus 5x. And if it's not given in this order, always write the square first, then the x form and then the constant, right? Okay. So what is this going to be? We're going to break the middle term, uh, right? And I'm going to show you how do we break it. So for now, let's say we break 5 minus 5x into minus 2x minus 3x plus 6. So can you see I've not changed anything here because simply minus 5x I've split it into minus 2x and minus 3x. Now you may say why? Why would that help us? So let's take a look how it helps us. So we are going to basically take now we are going to do grouping. Okay. So we are going to take x in common and it's going to be x minus 2. Remember we did that grouping technique. Remember the second technique here. So we are doing grouping of the terms. Right. And now we are going to do minus 3 times x minus 2 okay so what does that work out to be so now you can see we'll take out the x minus 2 common and this is our final answer right so you, by breaking the middle term we factorize this excellent i see a uh, guys has got the right answer x minus 2 times krish Mittal has the right answer fantastic guys k gotham has it correct absolutely right this is what you call splitting or breaking the middle term right and it's a quadratic polynomial because you see there's a square form now you may ask how did we do this here we could guess it right so what is the real technique so the real technique is that basically you take this uh, six right so you take the term here and we can write that as two times three okay so when we are uh, taking that uh, so you write it in terms of its factors so it can be six times one or two times three right so we can write this so let's select this form and so basically we need to take the terms as minus 2x right so we've taken the terms as minus 2 so first you break it down into its factors 2 and 3 and then we uh, then we check our sign so we are doing basically minus 2 plus minus 3 is going to give us the minus 5 right and the product minus 2 times minus 3 is going to give us 6 clear guys so please take a look what we've done here so we take our factors here, which could have been one or six, uh, one and six or two and three. So we'll select two and three so that the sum, right? So sum here of these uh, factors, can you see what is the sum here? Minus two and minus three should be the middle term, right? Because you've broken the middle term. Can you see it is minus five, right? So I'll just erase that for now. 
So that's going to be the middle term. So the sum should be uh, minus 5 and the product is going to be 6 and there's a 1x one, one square means it's a 1 here. So minus 2 times minus 3 is 6. Okay, so this is how you do middle term breaking where the sum of the factors is going to be the middle term, right, minus 5 and this is going to be the product is going to be 6. So our real middle term breaking is basically here, we've broken it into minus 2x plus minus 3x. Can you see? Okay, so that's basically, those are our split terms. So if you add them up, it's giving us the middle term. And if you do the product, minus 2x times minus 3x, it's going to give you 6x squared, right? So we ignored the x squared because we were just looking for the numbers. But the actual thing is the product of the terms should give you this part, right? the multiplication of this, uh, the first term and the last term, 6x squared. Excellent, guys. Is that clear? So that's how you do uh, splitting the middle term, right? Middle term breaking. All right, guys, go, uh, go ahead and apply the middle term breaking and try to solve this question, okay? 2x squared plus 11xy plus 5y squared. So come on, I want all of you to try. And you can see that uh, this one won't fit a, a perfect square, right? Like previous one was also not a a plus b whole square or a, a minus b whole square form. So here that's where when we go ahead and do the middle term breaking. So come on, I want all of you to try here. So come on guys, go ahead and try this question. So the main thing is how are you going to split the middle term? So the main thing can you see here that we have 2 and 5, right? Okay, so the product is basically 10. So what are the factors of 10? 2 times 5 or it can be 10 can also be written as 10 times 1. Right? So those are our possible split ups. We can have the uh, 2 and 5 or 10 and 1. That's how we can split the combinations. Right? And now you need to test which one here. Excellent. You guys got the right answer for the uh, previous question. Now please go ahead and try this question. Come on guys. Excellent. Excellent. So what are the terms going to be? So you can see that uh, 2 and 5 won't help us because 2 plus 5 is going to give us 7, right? But we have a 11 here, right? So if I took the terms as, uh, uh, right, and then you have the x and y. So if we took the terms as uh, 2xy plus 5xy, that's not going to help because that's going to give us 7xy. So that's not helping here. So we're going to erase that and let's try with the other combination, 10 and 1, okay? So you can see that uh, we have, if we take 10xy and xy, 1xy means xy, so then it's adding up to the middle term, right? 11xy. So we can go ahead and do this split and you can check the product is, uh, if you do 10xy times xy, you need to check is the product, the product of the first and the last term. So if you take that, it's gonna be 10x squared y squared and that's exactly equal to 2x squared times 5y squared. Right? So that's how you do middle term breaking. You take these numbers, the 2 and 5, and you write down these options. 10 can be broken as 2 times 5 or 10 times 1, right? And then you break the middle term according to that. Excellent. I see a lot of you are writing the correct answer. So our uh, this uh, question is going to factorize like this. 2x squared plus, we've chosen the middle term to break uh, into 10xy plus xy, right? Plus 5y squared. And now we have to do grouping, okay? So we are going to take 2x common here, right? And it's going to be x plus 5y. And here, what are we going to take common, guys? Y, again, we're going to get x plus 5y. So now it's simple. We just need to take x plus 5y common here, right? Very simple. Okay, can you see that? x plus 5y is going to be common here times 2x plus y. So please check my answer. Is it correct, right? Is my answer correct? x plus 5y, very good. I see Nippon has the right answer, okay, uh, right? Mitra has the right answer. I hope my answer is right, right? So because I also solved it right here in front of you guys. So please check 2x plus y uh, times x plus 5y, correct? Is that the right answer here? Excellent, excellent. And so the, this is the idea of splitting the middle term and we split it into these two parts, right? There are two possibilities, right? We could have done uh, 2 and 5, right? And 10 and 1. Uh, so we are doing 10 and 1 here. Uh, where did we get those from? From multiplying 2 and 5, right? Because the product needs to match. So we look at the factors and 10xy and xy is the correct split for the middle term. Okay, because they add up to 11xy. 
Superb. So great guys, we've learned middle term breaking also. Excellent, we are making great progress here. So we've uh, talked about common factor, grouping, difference of two squares, binomial, trinomial, splitting of the middle term. And now let's look at the interesting ones about sum and difference of cubes. So we're making great progress, guys. Hang on here and we are gonna master factorization in this video. All right, guys, I promise you that. So let's take a look at this. Sum and difference of cubes, okay? Because we're looking at all the techniques here. So uh, as we talked about a square minus b square, that we can easily write. Remember the difference of two squares, so that can be written in the form a plus b times a minus b. That is simple. One important thing to note, very important, that this cannot be factorized, okay? So uh, there's a formula for a square minus b square, but a square plus b square cannot be factorized. Clear? But cubes have uh, formulas, right? You have identities for both a cube minus b cube and a cube plus b cube. Very important. So please learn these identities. a cube minus b cube is as you expect a minus b here and the other terms are all positive. a square plus ab plus b square. Please look at this formula uh, towards the lower half of your screen and a cube plus b cube. So simple way to remember the a minus b changes into an a plus b. You have the same terms here except there's a minus sign here. So very interesting. Can you see these two formulas are very related except you have a negative sign here and here it's a plus b, right? And in this case, you have a square plus ab plus b square and here the plus changes into a minus, okay? So what's a good way to remember these formulas? Please write them down, okay? Don't read, uh, don't read your maths book like a storybook, okay? Okay, so I want all of you to write down these formulas. Writing helps you remember it and then you'll see you'll be able to quickly apply it in your questions. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and see how to apply these sum and difference of cubes. A cube minus B cube and A cube plus B cube. So come on, guys. Try this question on the screen. Factorize A cube plus B cube plus A plus B. Factorization is like, you know, solving a puzzle, right? You've been given a question uh, just like balancing of chemical equations is like solving a puzzle. Same for factorization, right? You know some techniques, you're applying it and uh, solving the puzzle here. So come on guys, what is this gonna be? So I want all of you to try here and you've got, uh, I've written out the formulas here, the important cube formulas. So what can we do here? So guys, can you see we have a a cube plus b cube here. So we are gonna apply this formula, right? So let's write this down because there's nothing common or something we can take here. So we're gonna apply our a cube plus b cube formula and let's write that down here. So that's going to be a plus b, right? Uh, times a square minus ab plus b square. So can you see guys, I'm just applying the formula and writing that, uh, applying that identity and writing this thing, right? And then we are going to be left with plus a plus b, right guys? And now can you see guys, a plus b is in common, okay? a plus b is in common. So you take a plus b common, and what are you gonna end up with? a square minus ab plus b square, right? And this a plus b, we can think this is uh, nothing but plus one times a plus b, right? Oh, I didn't write the one properly, let me write it again. So this is basically one times a plus b. So basically you're gonna have a plus one here. So can you see, we factorize that. Excellent, excellent, I see. Uh, K Gotham has the right answer, right? Uh, very good. So can you see guys? So this is our final answer we have here, right? A plus B times A square minus AB plus B square plus one. So how do you identify to use cubes? You are seeing cubes in the question, right? So that reminds you, hey, I need to probably use sum and difference of cubes. So as I told you, factorization, it's all like a puzzle hit and trial. You need to try it. If one technique doesn't work, you go to the other one, okay? Never give up, okay? It's just like balancing of chemical equations. Keep trying and keep practicing, guys. So go ahead and try this next question. Another interesting one, 16a to the power four minus 54a. And it's awesome to see all of you participating here. It's great to see that. And guys, please hit the like button right now and do share it with your friends. And yes, Satya Naran Mangal is saying, never give up. Absolutely right. Factorization, guys, never give up. Keep trying. Excellent, excellent. So come on, guys. Go ahead and try this. So what is this gonna be? Uh, so 16a to the power four minus 54a. And remember, what was our golden rule? Do you guys remember? 
if you have some uh, common factor, right? So if you have some common factor, take it out, okay? Take out the common factor. This is like our golden, golden rule, right? The rule number one, okay, which I call the golden rule. So let's go and see if we have some common factors here. So can you see we have that here, right? So if we take out our common factor, it's actually 2a. So we are going to basically be left with 8a cube, right? Minus 27. Do you guys see that? Okay, so please take out the common factor because this will simplify the question. All right, so now come on. How do you uh, solve this? So I've taken out the common factor, which was 2a here. Do you see this is our common factor? So we took it out in common and now we are going to go ahead and simplify this, right? Uh, factorize it, I mean. Okay, so now can you see there's a cube form, 8a cube, right? So let's uh, get it into a cubic form, right? Uh, so it's 2a and this is going to be uh, 8a cube is basically nothing but 2a whole cube, right? And minus 27. 27, you know, is nothing but 3 cube. Excellent. So minus 3 cube. Okay. And now, guys, can you see this part of the bracket is basically, so can you see that that's of the a cube minus b cube form? So we are going to apply the first identity, right, guys? Do you see that? Okay. So all of you see that. So we are going to get 2a times uh, so 2a cube minus 3 cube. So it's going to be a minus b, right? So say it in your mind, 2a minus 3. And then we are basically going to do a square plus ab plus b square. So what is that going to be? a square is basically 2a square. So it's going to be 4a square, right? 2a whole square, okay? Plus ab. So plus ab is basically going to be plus uh, we have a, so what do we have here? So 2a times this. So that's going to be 6a, right? Plus b square. So b square is nothing but 9 here. So guys, can you see that? So we've applied our first identity to this part, a cube minus b cube. And this is how we got. Excellent. So see, we've got this factorization. We easily solved this. And first golden rule, we took out our common factor 2a. And here is our final answer. Can you see? We have basically a product of three terms here. All of you see that? Right? All of you, can you see that thing? Okay. So we have 4a square. Uh, plus 6a uh, so these uh, can you see the product here guys okay right so and guys uh, please also hit the like button and do share it out with your friends so make sure uh, you're practicing these questions you're trying it out and uh, do you uh, and uh, yeah guys i want everybody to go ahead and try try it yourself uh, and we are learning all these different factorization techniques here. Excellent. And so uh, one thing, can you tell me? Excellent. I was waiting for that, guys. That's what I pause. Uh, Ashwini is asking, can we factorize that last bracket? Excellent. So that's why I was pa uh, pausing here. So can you see there's a scope of factorizing the last bracket as well? Superb. Great for pointing that out. So I was waiting for somebody to point that out here. And so this can also be factorized because can you see what form it is? So we have a 2a, 2a minus 3, and we can apply a a plus b whole square form, right? So it's basically going to be 2a plus 3. Can you see there's a 2a square, which is 4a square. And so it's basically nothing but 2a plus 3 whole square. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So you must don't leave out any other factor because even this term can be factorized. So we should not stop here. And uh, you guys can see that we have factorization uh, done there as well, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Or hold on guys, is there, uh, there's a 2a square. Are we jumping the gun here? Because one second guys, uh, I think let's hold on here because uh, can you see here, if we do a 2a plus three whole square, let's double check that guys. So it's gonna be 4a square plus a nine plus two times 2a times three. Uh oh, I think we're getting a 12a guys. Okay, okay, hold on. I think there's a, uh, this thing, I don't think that's uh, gonna be factorized further because you, uh, to have a whole square, you need a uh, 12a. Is that correct? Yeah, okay, okay, my mistake also, right? I was also jumping the gun here. I quickly saw that. So can you see that 6a cannot be factorized? So great discussion. So what is the important thing here? You must check it, okay? So see, I'm also practicing with you guys here, right? So you must check that there should not be 
any further factorization here and can you see 2a uh, plus 3 whole square what is it going to give guys so uh, this is a 4a square a uh, 9 is working out but that term needs to be uh, 2 times 2a times 3 and that's going to be basically because for a, a plus b whole square so that's going to be 12a so guys we can't do that this will be our final answer okay so that's uh, my mistake here all right guys so that's not correct because you uh, that will need 12a so this is going to be a final answer but very important point you must always check whether you can further factorize uh, your answer or not because you know sometimes you leave it not to its simplest form excellent all right let's go ahead and move on to the next question uh, to the next technique so we've done the first one the second one third one fourth fifth sixth right sum and difference of cubes we've looked at now let's look at another complicated formula right identity x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3 xyz all right guys so let's go ahead and take a look at this one so come on i want all of you to try so please go ahead and take a look at this identity guys so what do we have here x cube right so we have uh, x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz okay and what do we get the identity tells us this complicated uh, identity that can be broken down into x plus y plus z times x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus zx okay very it's quite a complicated formula to learn so please learn it by writing it down all right guys and now one very interesting thing if this x plus y plus z if this term is equal to zero okay then what will happen so if this term is equal to zero you can see that our this thing will simplify right so x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz is going to become zero because it's a product of these two so under that condition therefore we can write x cube plus y cube plus z cube is equal to 3xyz clear guys okay so because we uh, bring that to the right hand side so this is an extra condition also to learn here so let's see how do we apply this identity so come on i want all of you to try this to factorize this question here so come on guys try so basically you need to bring this into the this form right a uh, x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz form so let's see can we get that uh, for this question so it shouldn't be that difficult because can you see this one is a root 2 a whole cube the first term is a root 2 a whole cube the next one is what it's a 2b whole cube right guys uh, what is the next one uh, we need a plus so plus minus 3c the minus 3c is going to go into the bracket whole cube excellent guys and then we have plus what do we have here uh, sorry not a plus we need a minus right so we have a minus 3 and times we uh, we will multiply these terms right x y z so we'll get a root 2 a right uh, root 2 a times 2 b right times minus 3 c okay and we need to check is that actually uh, working out to this last term so please check that so you can see 3 times uh, 3 uh, 9 18 that's right and minus sign will get cancelled so absolutely correct okay so very good it's working out uh, to our x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz form so now basically we have to write this whole thing in that huge form right so what will be our first bracket be guys please take a look it's going to be x plus y plus z so let's write that out that should be pretty simple root 2a we just have to copy down the terms plus 2b right minus 3c okay and what is the next bracket that's the big one right the large one here so guys come on help me okay so what is this going to be x square so root 2 a whole square so that's basically going to be 2a square okay plus y square which is basically 2b whole square so 4b square and minus 3c whole square so that's 9c square okay a lot of terms in here okay and then we have minus uh, uh, xy so it's going to be root 2a times 2b so that's 2 root 2ab wow okay i'm running out of space let's write it here so minus 2 root 2 a uh, b right plus uh, we have uh, this times this so that's going to be 6 b c right over here uh, sorry minus so minus y z so that's going to be 2 b minus 3 c so that's going to be 6 b c okay and minus z x so we need to multiply the first and last term 
So we are going to get uh, the minus will get cancelled. So plus 3 times root 2 AC. Okay. So this is just you need to be careful and you know you need to go over these products carefully and look at all your x y terms. These were our x y and z terms. Can you see the ones in bracket? Okay. So the root 2 a is our x here basically guys. Can you see this is our x here. This is our y and this is our z. Can all of you see the pattern x cube plus y cube plus z cube and that is our minus. So this part was our minus 3 x y z. Clear? And then you just write it down and you just have to uh, substitute carefully and multiply. Okay. Very simple. And now there's another interesting question based on this identity. So guys, please try this. Okay. So here we need to evaluate this guy. This is a very interesting question. I want all of you to try. So evaluate minus 12 whole cube plus 7 cube plus 5 cube. Come on guys. And I'll give you a hint. Try to use this formula here. Okay. So I want all of you to try here. Come on. Okay, some of you are having trouble with technique 8. It's not a very difficult, only the formula is complicated, you know, and you need to write the terms carefully. So if you see something in this a cube plus, uh, x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xy uh, z form, these are the factors. This huge one, right? So this small factor x plus y z and that other big one, right? So we can break it. Very good. I think some of you are writing some answers here. So go ahead and try. Excellent, guys. So if you look here, can you see that uh, we have this form, right? So we basically have a something x cube plus a y cube, right? Don't worry about the minus plus a z cube. Can you see that form? Okay. But if you look, so what is our x here, guys? So x over here is basically minus 12, right? Y is 7 and z is 3. Uh, sorry, z is 5. Okay. Can you see? So now if you add up x plus y plus z, what do we get, guys? So if we add this up, can you see we get... 0, minus 12 plus 7 plus 5, excellent. Srinivas says 0, very good. So that means we can apply this formula, right? We can apply because our condition is matched. If x plus y plus z is 0, can you see this condition here? Let me underline that. So this is matched, so we can apply this formula, this one here, right? So let's go ahead and apply it. So what are we going to get? Uh, so, okay, uh, yeah, now I see some of you are getting the right answer. Previously, you had written, I think, 420. So it's going to be... Since our, uh, uh, this form is going to work out to be basically 3 times x, y, z. Since x plus y plus z is 0. Okay. So let's write that down. So what is uh, the answer going to turn out to be? 3 times. Okay. So here what we are doing, we are not doing factorization. We are using this identity to evaluate it. Okay. So see, if you had solved it, you would have to do all these huge cube and add them. But we are applying this interesting identity. So it's going to be 3 times x, which is minus 12. Okay, y which is 7 times 5. Okay, and if you multiply all this, very good. You guys have got, I see Raja has the right answer. Ashwini has the right answer. Excellent, excellent, right? Uh, no, it's not uh, minus 180. It's going to turn out to be minus 1260. Okay, so if you multiply these values, this is our final answer. Okay, and can you see uh, that uh, this is the final answer? Uh, and the best part is we didn't have to do any cubing. So we took advantage of this identity and we directly applied it and multiplied 3xyz. And we directly got y because our condition matched x plus y plus z is 0. So we didn't have to uh, do the cubing. We didn't have to do minus 12 cube, 7 cube, 5 cube. We quickly calculated the answer. So this is more than factorization. It's mathematic tricks, right? Using the formula. Excellent. I see Vishal Saxena has the right answer. Very good. Uh, Srinivas, very good. Okay. So that's going to be uh, Vineet Kumar. Excellent, guys. Now we are left with our last technique. Excellent. Yay. So we've done eight, eight of them, right? So we've talked about these eight ones. And the last ninth technique is also very, very important, which I've, I have a video on that remainder and factor theorem. So this one uses factor theorem. So guys, you must be remembering this. Or if you're not sure, please take a look. What is the factor theorem? If you have a polynomial fx and its degree is greater than 1, right? And if you have a which is a real number such that fa is equal to 0, then we can say that x minus a, a is a factor of fx, okay? So what is important that basically your polynomial fx, right? So polynomial can be anything like x square, uh, right? x square minus 5x plus 6 or whatever, right? And if you have f of a, right, some number a, 
right? It can be f of 2, f of 3, f of minus 2, whatever. If f of a is 0, then we can say x minus a is a factor of fx. And remember, in factorization, we want to find factors. So factor theorem is very, very useful. Now, why do we apply factor theorem? Because if you look at this question here, right? So if you uh, take a look at this question, uh, we want to factorize x cubed minus 6x x squared plus 11x minus 6. If you go in ahead and try any of these techniques, they're not going to work. Okay, so our factor theorem is like our last resort, our last option, because none of these techniques you will see will help us to factorize uh, this question, right? The one given here. So none of these, uh, all the eight techniques we've learned doesn't help us to factorize this question here, right? Can you see this question? Okay, so then we go for the factor theorem. And factor theorem is like a hidden trial method where we are going to uh, try to find the factors by substituting different values such that f of a is zero. Okay, and let me show you what is the trick of doing that. So one simple trick is how do you know what values to substitute? So take, the, take a look at the last number, right, which is uh, six, right? So you take a look at uh, uh, the uh, this number and then basically you break it down into its factors. So that's going to be one, two, <coughs> sorry, and three, right? So what uh, we can write that as, so we are going to be testing with plus and minus one, plus and minus two. So please note to test with both. Okay. And let me write it a bit clearly here. So let's write it a little apart. So six can be broken down into one, two, three, right? Okay. And so we'll be testing with plus one and minus one, plus uh, two and minus two and plus three and minus three. Okay. We're going to test with these values and see if f of these values gives us zero. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and try. Uh, so we're going to be testing with these different values. This is our question. And you need to check where. Very good. I think some of you already started testing. So let's write down our polynomial, which is fx is x cubed. So write that clearly. Minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Okay. And as we said, let's start testing with f of 1, right? So we are going to try f of 1 here. So what are we going to get here? 1 cube minus 6 times 1 square, right? Plus 11 times 1, okay? And minus 6. So what is that going to work out to be? 1 uh, minus 6 here, right? Plus 11 minus 6. And yay, can you see we've got 0 because we have 12 minus 12. So f of 1 is 0, guys. All right. And this all you can do in your rough. OK, because you never know. It may not work out. You might have to go to F minus one. You might have to go to F of two, F of minus T. Luckily for us, F of one is zero. So we can uh, therefore, what can we say from the factor theorem? Look here. What is the factor theorem? So X minus A is a factor, not X plus one. Right. Who's the factor, guys? X minus one. Be very careful because this one is zero. Therefore, we can say, guys, X minus A. So X minus one is a factor. Do you guys agree? Is a factor of our polynomial, this polynomial. Right, guys? So now we found out one factor, so it should be simpler to find the other factors. How? You just simply need to divide, right? So all you guys need to do is take x minus 1 and divide our polynomial with that, right? So x cubed uh, minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Okay, so just do the long division method, do the division. And I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to write the quotient directly. So you're going to see that the quotient is going to work out to be so guys, you can practice that what is the quotient, it's going to work out to be x square uh, minus 5x plus 6. Okay, if you divide these guys, so basically, we can say our fx has turned out to be equal to x minus 1 times x square minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so guys, is this our final answer? Or do we need to do something here? So come on, guys, take a look here. Okay, very good. I think Dheeraj has the right answer already. Anonymous, I think you have the right answer. Excellent. Excellent, guys. So please take a look. So x minus one is a factor, right? So of course, you can test with uh, two, three or the factor theorem. But you know, uh, better is to uh, get to the factor and now see if you can apply any of these methods, right? If they don't work, of course, again, you can take that part and go for the factor theorem. But can you see that here we can go for middle term breaking, right, guys? Because we can apply middle term breaking to this part, x squared minus 5x plus 6. Superb, guys, superb. So what you, uh, if you do apply middle term breaking, this is going to work out to be 
x minus 2, right? Because this will break it down as x uh, minus 2x and minus 3x. So we are finally going to get these factors, okay, which we saw earlier also. Excellent. So we shouldn't stop there. We need to factorize the last part. Fantastic, guys. Don't forget to do that. And so that's very important. Make sure your final answer is in its all are in the factors form, right? You've not left anything. And so this is our final answer. Fx is basically the product of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Clear, guys? Excellent. So there, can you see, we've covered all our nine techniques, including the last one, which is the factor theorem. Can you see that, guys? So we've covered all the techniques here, taking out the common factor, grouping, a difference of two squares, using binomial identities, using our trinomial identities, middle term breaking, splitting the middle term, sum and difference of cubes, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3x y uh, z identity factor theorem. I know this is a very power packed session and you know there's a overload of these techniques but guys believe me if you practice them it's going to be really easy and the thing is you should always keep your eyes you know for which technique to use. So when you're given a question go over in your mind and when you see cubes you'll apply the cube thing. If you see squares you know go for the square identities with the squares. Always remember but the golden rule uh, take out the common factor this is very important that should be your first step right always do that first so that you simplify the question go ahead for grouping and then you know the last resort this is like our last option right so last option if nothing works factor theorem right where you break down that last term into its factors and try substituting by hit and trial method till you hit on a factor and then you can again divide and simplify it all right guys so i hope you found this very useful and i have an interesting homework question for you you to try so factorize 3x to the power 5 minus 48x and guys do write your answer in the comments below i look forward to reading everybody's answers okay guys so make sure you guys write your answer in the comments below here and uh, i look forward to reading your answers and i'll try to reply to them as soon as possible so i uh, really hope you enjoyed this uh, factorization fun class you know on different techniques so we didn't practice a whole lot of questions because i wanted uh, to go over the different techniques for you right maybe we'll do uh, sums in a different class so i hope you liked it and guys as i said do check out our website manochaacademy.com we've got these great courses on physics chemistry and maths it's basically to help out you guys uh, for cbse and icse and we'll be launching more courses also soon so guys do check it out um, for physics chemistry and maths for cbse class 9 10 we've got the full courses and for icse physics class 9 right and we've got a lot of requests for launching more courses so guys we are definitely working hard on that i'll put the links below and guys do remember to share it out with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel what are you waiting for guys please hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell and thanks a lot for joining in on this live class you guys were super interactive and we were all factorizing together you know it was a lot of fun i hope you learned the techniques and do join us in the next live class which is uh, hopefully uh, there'll be a live class on friday at 8 pm otherwise we'll definitely have one next monday at 8 pm so either friday 8 pm or monday uh, 8 pm will be the next class so thanks a lot guys for uh, joining and do check out if you uh, like these live classes we have more live classes on our website right so do check out our website and the courses are at a huge discount you know uh, we want uh, everybody to be using the courses so they're uh, not at a high price they're at big discount so do check it out and the discounts are for a limited time and we have quizzes questions and interactive videos awesome guys thanks for joining stay safe so this is sandeep manocha signing off guys take care hope you enjoyed this maths class good night everyone and uh, uh, please keep learning and uh, keep having fun and hope this factorization class was fun. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to be signing off. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone.